Hi, my name is Eric Burns Guild, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'd like to show you two selection commands that are very unused and actually in a very bad way, because these tools actually help you make quick selections pretty fast. As you may know, there are a bunch of different ways how to make a selection inside of Photoshop, but um, one of the most used is, of course, the quick selection tool, where you just drag and paint to make a selection like this, which you know is fairly quickly. You can also use the magic wand tool. So if I deselect this and I click and use the magic wand, so you can very quickly make a magic wand selection here. But when it comes to making a full selection of all the sky elements in this image, it might take a while using both the quick selection and magic wand because the quick selection just selects consecutive pixels like this and it, sometimes it goes far too far like this here. I'd have to come back and pull the fence back and I have to go in all, to all of these small detail areas where I'd have to add and it's going to take me a long while. So let me introduce you to the grow and similar commands that some of you may never have used. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool and just make a quick round ring selection here in the sky. Then I'm going to go to select and in the select menu are grow and similar. So let's start with grow. If I just click grow, it's going to take this circle selection and grow it based on pixels that are similar, which is to say they're the same blue color, which is why the selection stops roughly here, because then it's too light in this area for it to recognize that as similar pixels. But it's only selecting the the pixels that are adjacent to the original selection. That means grow basically just takes the selection you've made and grows it to all similar pixels, but they have to be next to each other. What can really speed up an image like this is by using similar because that's going to select every piece of a blue pixel that's going to appear in the entire image. So if I based on this and if, if if you want the entire blue part of the sky, which is lighter blue here, you might continue hitting grow because it's going to grow the selection a little bit more each time and in a couple of extra clicks. I've gone down and I have this roof more or less perfectly selected. So what I can do now is go select and then similar. And you see it's going to take it, the fence. It's going to select all the blue skies. And because it works based on color, I don't even have to be afraid that it's going to capture the black. And if I zoom in on the selection, you can really see here that it is definitely a lot. Now, this is a noisy image, but it's definitely not getting any of the black piece of the railing or the fence. And, of course, it's also selecting in between the leaves right here. And it is also doing the windows, and it's doing them pretty exactly. So what I can do now, of course, is... If I, if I just duplicate this on its own layer and hit in command I to inverse, you can see that, you know, based on this yellow sky, you can see that we get a fairly good selection for having spent absolutely no time on this at all. Now, if I just go ahead and undo this two steps so that I still keep my selection, I can go ahead and activate any selection tool, go into the refine edge command, which is uh, fairly new here in Photoshop and with this I can choose to preview this I'm going to preview this on well, let's see you can put preview it on black uh, I can also go ahead and of course and invert this so if I want to select everything whoops um, inverse the selection select inverse and I get every part of the building so if I go to refine edge I can actually see how this would look when I replace the sky would say on black. So I'm going to use on black because it's a very good contrast. And what you can do now is turn on smart radius and just increase the radius of the selection just a little bit. 
and as much actually as it's needed. And you're going to see we're going to bring back a lot of the blue here, which is not what we want. So in this case, definitely keeping the radius low to get, and the smart radius really low, to get what we're after. And maybe we need to shift the edge, remove or increase a little bit extra while we work with the smart radius to get a decent selection. Now, of course, you realize uh, instantly that this image and this selection in itself is really tough. There's a lot going on, the leaves and everything, and it's going to be really hard to select this perfectly. But I think with the Groove tool and, and the similar selection, compared with the Refine Edge, you can get pretty close to something fairly convincing pretty quickly. So it's at least easy for you to do this switch and then see, should I spend more time selecting this or should I just throw away this idea and work on something else? So that's under the select menu, grow and similar. It just helps you make good selections much quicker. Thanks for watching this tutorial. My name is Eric Bernschild. Bye bye for now.